The severe drought in the western part of the U.S. is about to get even worse. Here are the details. CNN reports that scientists say the climate crisis is behind the increase in droughts globally, and this increase is currently hitting the U.S. in the form of the historic multi-year drought that is parching the eastern U.S. More than 90% of this region has been in drought since June, and the Colorado rivers Lake Mead and Lake Powell are draining at alarming rates. The unrelenting drought there is about to get worse with La Nina on the horizon, according to David DeWitt, director at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center. As we move into fall from October on, the southwest U.S. is going to see persistent intensification and development of drought, DeWitt told CNN. La Nina is marked by cooler sea surface temperatures across the central and eastern Pacific, near the equator, which causes global weather changes. In the southwest U.S., it typically causes the jet stream, a high-altitude wind stream that carries storms around the globe, to shift northward. This will have the effect of even less rain falling in the parched southwest. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's latest projections show a 70% to 80% chance of La Nina emerging during the northern hemisphere's winter season. Lake Mead is the massive lake that was created when the Hoover Dam was finished in 1936. This vital reservoir has now reached the lowest level it has ever been, and weather forecasts show that it will probably drop a lot lower. If this happens, all electricity generation inside the Hoover Dam's wall will shut down, and thousands of farms will turn back to the dust they were before the dam was built. Here are the details. NBC News reports that water levels in Lake Mead, the largest U.S. reservoir by volume, fell to 36 percent, its lowest level ever on Thursday, June 11, as the region continues to face the effects of a devastating prolonged drought. Lake Mead was formed when the Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s. It provides water for urban, rural, and tribal lands across the southwest. Officials expect levels to get worse through another dry, hot summer. In normal years, the dam produces enough electricity for 8 million people, but the water shortage will slow energy output. Every foot of lake level decline means about 6 megawatts of lost capacity. The Hoover Dam's energy capacity has already dropped by 25 percent, and levels will continue to decline through this autumn. Las Vegas recently became the first city in the U.S. to ban useless grass around streets, offices, and housing developments in an effort to conserve water. The devastating drought has caused the Colorado River system to decline to half its capacity, and the basin has seen historically low inflows over the last 16 years. The rapid decline has prompted plans for the first ever water shortage declaration from the federal government. The declaration, which will probably be issued in August of this year, would affect distribution to states and Mexico. The extreme weather that has seen record-breaking wildfires in California and the strongest hurricane to hit Louisiana in 160 years looks set to get worse. On Thursday, September 11th, the U.S. Climate Prediction Center said the weather pattern known as La Nina had officially formed. This is why La Nina is important. La Nina brings dry, warm weather to the southwestern U.S. It brings cool, wet weather to an area reaching from the Pacific Northwest and southeastern Alaska to the northern plains and central Canada. La Nina, which means little girl in Spanish, is a complex ocean atmosphere phenomenon that occurs every few years in the Pacific Ocean. Under normal conditions, winds from the Pacific Ocean push warm water from the west coast of South America towards Indonesia. As the warm water moves westward, cold water rises. When La Nina occurs, winds in the Pacific grow much stronger. They push even more warm water towards Indonesia, causing more cold water to rise near the west coast of South America. This could worsen the drought in the southwestern U.S. this winter while bringing a cooler, wetter winter to other parts of North America. These changes in sea surface temperature are felt around the planet. La Nina can lead to more rain in Australia and Indonesia, stronger hurricanes and typhoons, and more lightning in some parts of the world. People find it confusing that climate change can involve some extreme cold weather events as well as warm weather ones. Here's one explanation. Accelerating Arctic warming as a part of global warming is likely responsible for severe winter weather, like powerful snowfalls and abnormal cold spells in the northern hemisphere, according to a new study. The study, in the journal Science, explains the influence of climate change on the Arctic increases the likelihood of winds above the North Pole being stretched, which in turn makes extreme cold weather events in the U.S. and elsewhere more likely. The freezing temperatures that hit Texas in February, killing dozens and causing four million homes and businesses to lose power, became the prompt for the study, according to its lead author who spoke to The Guardian. In the conversation, he explains that Arctic warming is causing changes in its climate, such as melting sea ice and increasing snowfall in Siberia. 
That, in turn, means levels of energy and moisture moving between the surface of the Earth and its atmosphere are changing. Those changes kick the atmosphere, resulting in upward-moving waves rippling into the stratosphere, where they stretch and weaken the band of fast winds that circles above the Arctic, known as the Arctic Polar Vortex. In addition, as the polar vortex shifts around, its effect on winds and temperatures means that the atmospheric waves which affected it are in turn affected by it, and are reflected back down to the surface where they can influence weather patterns. Summing up this seeming contradiction of warming causing colder weather, the study's author explained simply, when the polar vortex is nice and circular, that's a sign all the cold air is bottled up over the Arctic. When it stretches like this, a piece of it goes into Asia, and a piece of it goes towards eastern North America. And that was what happened with the Texas cold wave. Other recent examples of the polar vortex's effect on the U.S. are also readily available. Last May, almost two months after the beginning of spring, record-breaking winter weather returned to America with a vengeance, with New York City seeing traces of snow that tied a record for the city's latest snowfall. Back then, the polar vortex dumped snow and cold Arctic air on parts of the northeast United States and Canada over Mother's Day weekend, with springtime snow falling in parts of New York and New Jersey. These weather events operate alongside more widely understood issues, like rises in sea levels caused by the melting ice, and the study's lead author explains that the new results offer yet another reason to rapidly reduce the greenhouse gas emissions that are driving global warming, as well as emphasizing the need to develop better strategies for managing stream weather events, both hot and cold. Matthew Patterson, research director of the Sustainable Consumption Institute at the University of Manchester, recently published a plan for how to achieve the first part of that goal. Writing on the conversation, he said to limit the globe's warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, we need to take these fairly simple steps as soon as possible. First, we need to ban all new coal-fired power plants, all new oil and gas operations, and all airport expansions. In essence, the world could agree to a fossil fuel non-proliferation treaty. Existing coal plants could be rapidly replaced with renewable sources of energy, like wind farms. Radical improvements could be made in the energy efficiency of buildings. Instead of using natural gas for heating and cooking in buildings, people should only use electricity. Ground transport could be decarbonized by a shift to electric vehicles such as electric cars, trucks, buses, and trains. Lastly, people should move away from private cars toward bicycling, walking, and public transport. The recent heat wave in the states of Oregon and Washington caused a lot of damage to roadways. In one post on Twitter, a user based in Portland shared photos of a nearby road and said their house began to shake as the road's concrete started to split. The user wrote, The house started to shake and we thought it was an earthquake. But no, the road was so hot it literally buckled. Here's how it happened. Newsweek reports that roads are buckling and breaking apart from the unprecedented hot weather that's been hitting the Pacific Northwest region of the U.S. In the usually cool Portland, temperatures soar to 47 degrees Celsius on Monday, June 28th. Scientists say the problem is that Oregon's roadways were not designed to survive such heat. These roadways are made of concrete slabs that contract in cold weather and expand in hot weather. The slabs were shaped with gaps between them, and these gaps are there to create room for the concrete when it expands. However, these gaps are only big enough to make room for the kind of expansion that happens during normal temperature highs, and the recent heat wave created temperatures so high that the concrete slabs expanded so much that they pushed against each other, causing the slabs to break and buckle. Roads that were made of asphalt, on the other hand, often became so hot that they became soft like toffee, and thus became deformed by large numbers of heavy vehicles driving over them. Meanwhile, workers ventured out last week in the blistering heat to put cracked concrete and asphalt roadways back together. Steel drawbridges were doused with water to make sure they wouldn't swell shut under the oppressive heat. North of the border, a weather station in Lytton, British Columbia, notched the highest temperature in Canada's recorded history, a mind-melting 121 degrees Fahrenheit, or 49.6 degrees Celsius. Soon after that, the town was destroyed by a wildfire. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.